everyone, to another episode of the Adept is Ridiculous podcast. My name's DK Diamantes. My co-host is Bricky. He's got all the ridiculous Warhammer knowledge. And if you enjoy today's podcast, please head over to patreon.com slash Ridiculous, where you can get access to our Discord, uh, behind-the-scenes stuff, bloopers if they happen, and some sweet HD Posters. Uh, the new one is a Sisters of Silence one, um, which is actually very tasteful. It's not like our usual ab-focused whatever. She's just she's really boss. So yeah, patreoncom slash ridiculous. and uh, tis the season for giving the gift of ridiculous. And Bricky, where can these fine our fine listeners give the gift of ridiculous? Well, DK, the gift of ridiculous is centralized, located entirely within your kitchen, but it's also oh. located in orchid8.com or check the description out orchid8.com. You can get yourself some great merch, some Doge Van Dyer stickers, some mechanic kiss inspired long sleeve tees, some good <laughs> orc inspired I'm a tank hoodies and shirts as well as our main white and black hoodies and shirts all Grab legally distinct you, all distinct <laughs> grab it while you can because obviously Christmas is a very busy busy time for the merch also make sure you finish up Caiaphas Kane for the Emperor for the book club we'll be having that episode around mid-December as well Ooh. um oh also, quick oh, question um yes would you, I don't know if you have this information, but people might want to know, is there like, um, do you know the shipping dates and what the cutoff date is to get something by Christmas? Um, if you live in internationally, uh, you can roll the dice. Sometimes if you live in like the UK, we can get it to you really quick. If you live in buttfuck Finland, um, <laughs> I'm, it's going to, it might Order be more difficult. <laughs> uh, but if you're in America, definitely give it a good like week. Okay, cool. Just cool, to, cool, just cool. to be sure. Um, besides that, uh, DK. Yes. I, I, I have a quote for you. Okay. I, you sound I, unsure. Is it too much of a giveaway? Um, maybe. It, okay. Now remember, I'm kind of slow, so you might be good. <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little, oh, I can't say the thing. That I, was I was gonna say, I know what you know you're what going for. I, you know what and I'm going that, for. That is probably the quote I would give you right now, but you know, yeah. I'm a little slow. I'm a little slow on the upkeep sometimes. It's early in the morning ish, so you might still be good. Oh, actually, this is, this is actually literally going to uh, spoil it for you. Oh, well, I probably still won't get it. It's fine. You, you will get it. Oh, okay, fine. You have to tell me who's saying it. Not the, or at least what faction oh. they're from. Okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. All right, it says, quote, a new tyrant joined the fray, and in an eye blink, the whole character of the swarm changed. The ravening berserker spirit that had driven the Tyranids onto the ridge was gone as if it had never existed. Left in its place was something cannier and infinitely more worrisome. It was then that I knew the battle to be lost. Uh oh, <laughs> nothing is immediately coming to mind. <laughs> well, you know um, what it's about. <laughs> yeah, well, it's about someone that's apparently fucking up the Tyranids, right? Or a Tyranid arrived and now he's about to get fucked up. Oh boy, I don't know a whole lot about the the, the Tyranids and who's taken out Tyranids before. I know we did an episode on the Tyranids. Um, na, um, na, um, na, sh- I. That is I, not I, an answer. Those are noises. <laughs> I am. I'm trying to think of anything that might even make a, a semblance of sense. Um, pick a Space Marine chapter. Oh, is it? Is it? Is it at least a Space Marine chapter? Is that what you're going with? P- pick a pick a Space Marine chapter. Pick a Space mm. Marine chapter. DK. Pick a Space Marine uh, chapter. The, the Raven Guard. You're wrong. It's the Ultramarines. Shh. No! No! <laughs> Not them! I would I would have never guessed them because I hate them. Uh, I'm, I'm, so, you know. Man, what is, what the hell? What's that clip? I don't know what that movie's from, but it's like this white guy is being pulled up into this, like, uh, <clears throat> this, this, like, I forget, it's like Asian group, uh, like, like, warrior force or, or army or whatever, and he's like, take him to Detroit. Have you seen, oh, no! have you seen that? I'm just imagining me... Pointing to you and saying, take him to Ultramar. No, like, no not Ultramar. Anywho, we're talking uh, about the first tyrannic war. 
Okay. This is the first encounter with the Tyranids, the first ever encounter, and the Battle of Macrog. A, a oh. very enjoyable story that um, this might make you like the Ultramarines a little more, um, mainly because <laughs> it's it's quite a, a valiant fight. Okay. Uh, okay. It, it's very, it has a lot of Fall Acadia vibes to me, where just the, the sheer, like, uh, difficulty of this war mm -hmm. is pretty nuts. Uh, but this is the first real major encounter with the Tyranids. This is when they arrived. Well, what, what bugs me is that I actually was planning on doing <laughs> bugs something. You. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I was actually playing this whole concept where I was going to... We talked about Marnius Calgar before. Do you even yeah. remember who that is? Um, it sounds familiar, like the Battle of Macrag. I think you mentioned it in passing before, but I don't think we ever elaborated on it. Um, because Ultra Rains versus Tyranids isn't ringing any bells, which is probably why I didn't get the quote at the beginning. Um, Marnius, oh, he's the, um, uh, he's like the, the, the first in command behind, um, uh, Robot Gilliman, right? And he, he lost an arm or he lost his arms and legs and he's got like big mecha arms and legs or something. You get, you're getting there. He is the chapter master. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, so chapter master, uh, for the loyalist space Marines, you can kind of think first captain for the Legion for the chaos space Marines. So if you right. think, if you're think, well, it's not, it's not the same, um, at all, but you gotta think of like the head in a sense, a head honcho. So right. he's the head honcho of the Ultramarines before Gilliman was resurrected. And he's still okay. technically, I think, the chapter master, but he, because Gilliman is the Lord Commander of the Imperium in general. Oh, right. So he's not technically leader of the Ultramarines. He's just like leader of the Imperium. Sorry. Right. So Calgar is the leader of the Ultramarines to right. an extent. I mean, I guess so is Gilliman, but whatever. Semantics. Um, yeah. Calgar, I was trying my best to actually hype up Marnius Calgar beforehand and not tell you who he was. To kind of do this like, hey, every all this cool things for this cool character, he's an ultramarine. And then like, and and then, and then you know, all this kind of thing. And then you're like, ah, oh no, Despair. I've been fooled. I've been maybe, fooled. maybe I like an ultramarine. Yeah, like maybe I'll, I'll change your mind a little bit. And I was looking for quotes from him. And mm -hmm. I got Jack, man. I got I got Jack. All of his quotes are are the most ultramarine things I would ever hear. Oh, they are no. so ultramarine. They they are. Uh, we follow in the footsteps of Gilliman, as it is written in the Codex. So it shall be. We are the no. ultramarines, the sons of Gilliman. Whilst we draw breath, we stand. Whilst we stand, we fight. Whilst we fight, we prevail. Nothing shall stay our wrath. Damnation starts with little steps by arrogantly thinking you are wiser than our great forebears, by tinkering with truth, by compromising, by departing with the straight and narrow path of the Emperor's light. For Ultramar, charge. I'm just like, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> what a dork. <laughs> he's he's such a dork, but he's he's such he's such a boss. I'm not gonna lie, he's such a boss. Okay. Alright, uh, alright. He's like the a problem. weightlifting dork. He's like that weightlifter that's got like the the broken glasses and he wears like a shirt and tie with no sleeves. Yeah. Is, is, no, is, he, he's the he's the super attractive actor that they cast to play the nerd in the 80s. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Okay. Um he's a he's a huge dork, but he's actually he actually kind of fucks. Uh his tactics okay. is, are insane. He is a laughably good hand-to-hand -hand combatant, which is rare for Ultramarines. Like, he, he mm. does some fucking fisting. He fists. <laughs> this this guy fists. Well, look at those fists that he's got. Look at those big old gauntlets. Like He's got man. two fisting gauntlets. He's, he's yeah. doubling up his fisting. He's fisting squared. <laughs> fisting squared. Gross. Double fisting? Uh-uh. Double uh -uh. fisting. You know what they call it, man. You, you know, you, one finger is fine, two fingers okay, three is the shocker, two fists is the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> God, I hate it. I I hate that. Oh, oh. So, it's, it's, it's wait, wait, not... Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. I want to read this. Okay, go ahead. It's only when finishing issue five that I realized that Marnius Calgar is a love story, but it's a love story between me and his power fists. Kieran Gillen, writer of the Marvel Marius Calgar miniseries. 
<laughs> that's that's pretty great. So ultramarines are not accustomed to like hand to hand, like up close and personal, like pow pow. They're just are oh, they kind of like infantry that like they're more inclined to like do like shooting stuff and ultramarines. Ultramarines normally operate as a mid range gun line. Um, right. But they, they, they absolutely can melee. They're totally good at melee. They're fine at melee. They're space breeds. They're always good at that stuff. Sure. Um, but they're not specialized, like, okay. say, White Scars or something. Right, right. Um, so the main concept is of the Ultramarines is just having incredibly good, well-rounded tactics. Right. And, and Ultramarines are a bowling ball without the finger holes. There's this... <laughs> it's not the... Like, it's cool to have a bowling ball... Like, that's cool. Like, I have a free bowling ball. Cool. I'm pondering my orb. You know, it's an orb. He's pondering it. <laughs> well but there, there's not a crack in the in the, in the the ball. It's a smooth surface. It's a, it's a perfectly seamless tactician kind of thing where they may not specialize in speed or, or fire or, or stealth, but they right. are so well-rounded that it's hard to find a weakness. Right. So it's smooth just like their brains. You know, there's a lot of smooth brain space marine chapters. World eaters, maybe a little. Uh, yeah. Let's say the space yeah. wolves, perhaps. I I'm not quite yeah. sure I, I hit them in the smooth brain. I in fact, I think their brains are a little too wrinkly. That they're oh, nerds. Okay. <laughs> maybe smooth like an ultramarine fan's brain. Huh? Ah. ah there love we you, go. Lu love you, Luton. We do. Oh yeah. Um, of course we do. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was asking Luden for some help on this one, and, and he, he he probably could have, but he didn't. He's like, he wasn't in my stream yourself. for long. He wasn't in my stream for long, so I didn't get a chance to say <laughs> to ask more questions. Uh, anyway, anyway, let's get back on topic. So, mm. uh, the first sign of the Tyranids was on the planet of Tyran, hence the name, because the Tyranids mm. have no actual name we can refer to them as, because we right. do not know they, they don't speak to us. Yeah. Um, now, it's only originally, what the survivors called them, right? Exactly. So originally, Tyran was a planet with about 80% water, tons of sea life, huge like creatures like krakens and stuff. Like, like a total nautical paradise. Well, not a paradise. It's very deadly, but that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, eventually, what happened is that this force of Tyranids just, well, I mean, it arrived. It mm -hmm. showed up and it immediately started bodying the planet. And one of the planetary governors or, or the people behind it, whatever, whoever it was, um, they sent a data cache deep, deep, deep into the ocean in order to record what had happened there. Uh, I guess I guess Shai is another quote for me. Shai is really Ooh. pulling out the quotes today. Uh, it says, we cannot live through this. Mankind cannot live through this. In a single day, they have covered this planet with a flood of living blades and needle-fanged mouths. Kill yeah. one, and ten take its place. If they are truly without number, then our race is doomed to a violent death before every shred of our civilization is scoured away by a force more voracious than the fires of hell themselves. Death. By the machine god, death is here. The last words of Magos Varnak. Wow. And when, an when an Adeptus Mechanicus Magos says that. That's, that's You're that's in for rough. some shit. Yeah. You, so you said that place was like 80% water, right? How, uh, yeah, how it does was it, pretty. How, how did the Tyranids do in water? Like Perfectly fine. They, I was going to say, would they drown? No. Oh, boy, that sucks. Oh, oh, dude, the Tyranids, they're, they're so adaptable, man. You can't even poison the bastards. So you couldn't even be like, oh, God, just get everybody onto a barge and just go out to the middle of uh, the ocean or something. They'd still oh, fuck. Just... oh, dude, you are underestimating the Tyranids. They'll, they'll drink the fucking ocean before that. They'll, they'll evolve gills within, like, a nanosecond. They'll, they'll literally, within, within maybe five minutes, realize there's water... Uh, change their biomass to form gills and then eat your ship. Whoa, Tyranids are are they're a little crazy. I like I didn't realize they were that adaptable. Uh, is that something you can do in the tabletop? Do they have like a crazy adaptability uh, stratagem? I guess. No, well, there's a, a stratagem that you can do called something called adaptive physiology. 
Mm -hmm. And that is basically just the concept that you can give an upgrade to certain like models in order to just it just gives them upgrades. Um, oh, okay. no, there's no like adaptability versus your opponent kind of thing. Uh, oh, normally, okay. that's not a very good thing on the tabletop because then your list gets a little tailored. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but no, but like Tyranids, they adapt like hell. They are so quick to fix things. If, if they enter a battle and they're getting hit by anti-tank, they adapt large carapace armor. If they need to go through tunnels, they create smaller bugs. Like, they're just consistently a problem. Man, Tyranids are a big problem, then. Like, I just thought mm. they were just ravenous bugs, and they just had different varieties. I didn't realize they could just instantly evolve based on what they were fighting. That's that's really scary. It's very that's scary. way worse than what I thought they were. So, who found this area, who found the Tyran uh, planet, eventually later was a man named Inquisitor Krypton, Kryptman, or Phytus Kryptman. Um, now, they found the planet Baron. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if he said, when they say Baron, they mean no water. But I think Ooh. they might. I think they mean Baron. Like, oh. <laughs> gone. It so is, it a planet is, that was 80% water was barren when the Tyranids got done with it? Often the water has microorganisms in it, which involves biomass and minerals and, like, the krakens and fish. Oh, boy. They, they, <laughs> they turn this thing into a rock, a moon. Holy shit. Holy and, shit. And this man named Inquisitor Cryptman, which I'm going to... Let's talk. Let's talk about Cryptman for a second. All right. Okay. Okay. Crypt, look at that man's spectacles. Look at his. Look at his specs. <laughs> look at that man's. Look at that man's glasses. Look at those specs. He thinks he's so cool. Now, I I might be getting my actual canon lore and my emperor text to speech lore confused, mm -hmm. but I think Cryptman, if I'm not wrong, was excommunicated from the Inquisition. Oh. Because he, must have he was done something real bad then. Because because he was too evil. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. wow! One one cannot oh. consider the fate of a single man, nor ten, nor a hundred, nor a thousand. Billions will live and die by our actions here, and we have not the luxury to count the cost. Oh, so you know how in Halo. The Ugh. way you stopped the flood by setting <laughs> off the halo rings was to starve them of their food source. Yep. Kripman believes that exterminatus is a similar use to stop the Tyranids. So he's oh. like, the Nids are going to eat this whole world and grow strong, die. Well, was he also, I vaguely remember us talking about this, like, if they knew that there were several planets in the Tyranids' path, like, before the Tyranids even showed up, they would exterminate us the planet just so that the Tyranids had nowhere to go, and they'd have that to, was, like, just... That's a Cryptman idea there. Yep, that's the Cryptman <laughs> yeah, man. That's, that, was that, that sounds like it. That's his brainchild. He's like, this kid might grow up to be Hitler, so I'm gonna put it in... I'm, I'm gonna shoot it. Jeez. That's Being Cryptman. too evil for the... Because, the, like... Imagine all the books we've read where there's like some like really dastardly person and it's like, yeah, they're still in the Inquisition. It's fine. And it's like to be so evil that even the Inquisition is like, uh uh, like, yeah, mm -mm, you're out. That's mm -hmm. that's a that's a hoof. It's it's like Hitler saying, whoa, man, let's let's take a break here. <laughs> settle down. That's a little too extreme. Yeah. S s settle down, Jimbo. <laughs> Now, moving from there, he was the one who discovered the planet and then immediately warned the neighboring planet because Tyran was in the Ultramar system uh, of this incoming threat. So he warned Marnius Calgar of the Ultramarines that this was a high is this high fleet, which was nicknamed High Fleet Behemoth. And it was on an, a destined course towards Macrog. And if it was not stopped. Macrog is the home world of the Ultramarines, if you forget. Yeah. Um, yep. If it's not stopped here, it will be hundreds of light years before they can even attempt a similar stand. There you could see uh, the High Fleet's tendrils moving their way in from that Whoa. map. Whoa! <laughs> that bottom is High Fleet Behemoth. 
Whoa! And if you can see right at the end, the final tip, that is Macrog. That is the battle we're about to discuss. Whoa, those are all tendrils of of the 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 Tyranids? Those are that's all just Tyranid swarms? Uh yeah, not like not like physical tendrils, but like those are the swarms of the Nids. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh dude, we're that's fucked. So much Nids. Yeah, those like that system is doomed. That that's the thing that it's kind of hard, is that the since the Nids don't have a major story, you have to kind of make them the punching bag sometimes. But in oh, reality, yeah. I think we're fucked. Yeah. Oh god, that's so many nids. So like, <laughs> let's talk even let's fight talk that? about it. Let's talk about this battle, buddy. Let's talk about okay. this. Okay. Let's do so, it. So Marnius Calgar, chapter master of the Ultramarines, amassed a, a preemptive strike force, warships, uh strike cruisers, multiple supernova class uh defense platforms, orbital batteries, ba uh, gigantic battle barges, a couple of those which are really big. Uh, he even took up privateers and, and merchant fleets and, and hired oh. them to assist. He grabbed everything. He scrounged up everything. And when Behemoth finally arrived, they held them off for a time. A slight time. How, uh, how long is a time exactly? Is that like a month, a year? Imagine, imagine you've got 100 U.S. Marines, right? Okay. And and they're they're in like first rank, second rank. Like there's one standing, one's crouching beneath the first one, and they're all lined up in a, in a firing line. Mm -hmm. And in front of them is an entire like pitch black swarm of flies. <laughs> and the, and the goal is that the flies can't get past the marines. Now, if oh. they unload all their guns into that swarm of flies, they're gonna get rid of a pretty serious amount of flies. But there's no way to get rid of all of them. But some are going to slip. Yeah. Some are going to slip. And with each volley, more and more kept on slipping. And yeah. in the beginning, it was pretty good. They were holding them off. It's just like this. Remember that, that scene at the end of Mass Effect 3 with that giant space battle when they all started shooting at the same time? It's like this wall of fire. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, you're imagining that, but on the 40K scale. And you got like super, like, like giant orbital gun platforms that are firing. Like, you know, like... Orbital gun platforms, like cities in space that are larger <laughs> than the city in space that are strike cruisers. Like, example, uh, Soul Hunter, uh, Night Lord Trilogy, Covenant of Blood mm. was a strike cruiser. That oh. is significantly smaller than a battle barge, which is like dwarfed by an orbital platform. Jeez. And there was like <laughs> 12 orbital platforms like 10 battle barges, Damn, like 30 strike that is, cruisers. That is, that's, that's a lot. And he even grabbed like merchants who happen to have some guns on their ship. He's <laughs> like, if you help us survive this, because they, they had no idea what the fuck they were going to deal with. They had no clue what yeah. was coming. A, a uh, example, was coming. <laughs> look at that picture I just posted on the bottom. Look at the size of that Tyranid vessel. Oh, that's one Tyranid vessel? That is a singular. Holy shit. That thing's massive. Yeah, it is. Oh, gross. So as they, they kept on sending their swarms of bugs in and in and in, uh, eventually enough broke through to the planet. And on Macrog, there are two major things you need to defend. You got the polar fortresses, and I'm assuming that's North and South Pole, you know? I, yeah, that sounds right. So the polar fortresses are the main things they need to deal with. So Calgar split his army into three. He had the first, uh, because it was not possible to oppose the Nids piecemeal. You would just get surrounded. Like if you, yeah. like, all right, some Terminators here, some Marines here, no way. You need to have armies. Yeah, yeah. Because if you, and so he had three separate things so they wouldn't have to do with divide and conquer. The first two were large armies of Imperial Guard and large companies of, of Space Marine Marines. These were right. sent to the two polar uh, uh, fortresses to bolster them. Calgar led his own specific uh, army as a rear guard to kind of help bolster uh, the other two armies and mm -hmm. act as a main deterrent against the Synapse creatures. His main goal was to deal with the big bugs. 
He who was because he right. found out quickly that you kill the big bug and the small bugs start to get get on the fritz. Right. Okay. Damn. So, so he he learned pretty quick. He was like, okay, kill big bugs, small bugs start going ah, and they yeah, prioritize your targets because if you waste all of your ammunition on the little guys, like you're gonna be fighting them forever. But at least you can do some widespread damage by killing the big boys and make the little ones go all crazy nuts. So, exactly. And so in the beginning was working pretty great. Uh, Calgar was doing a good job. They were taking out the big bugs. They were able to very, I mean, these are the ultramarines. Their tactics are, are unheard of. They have, yeah. they're drilled to perfection. They're very good at, at prioritizing their targets. But mm -hmm. despite this, they just kept coming. They, oh. the Tyranids just would not stop. And they don't and if, stop coming and they don't stop. Don't coming. stop coming and they don't stop. Yep. Anyway, so uh, the main stand came at a starport. This was known as the Battle of Cold Steel Ridge. Ooh, uh, what a name. Jeez. I like that name a lot. The Cold oh, yeah. Steel Ridge. Uh, so this was called the Sirico Starport. And this is the main, obviously, it's where all the major... Uh, ships and stuff to get them off world war sure uh, and so they were ending up fighting off the nids and they were kind of making a they're backing up to get to the starport to because they were bolstering both sides i think they were like kind of flying over assisting with help uh, and dealing with a lot of the nids from one fortress then getting back in and flying over and yada yada i think it was like a yeah, major yeah. effort well as they were backing their way up to that a whole bunch of gene stealers blew through the sewers of the starport and oh, slaughtered no. <laughs> completely slaughtered all of the pilots and crew. Oh boy, that's that is oh, that's so, harsh. So while there were thunderhawks and stuff to be able to supply and maneuver they were able to deal with the Ultramarines, but they didn't have enough to help get rid of the auxiliary forces like the Guard and the other planetary defense. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, Calgar made his major decision to make his final stand at Cold Steel Ridge. Okay. And with that, the Tyranids themselves had found out that through the battle, they identified Calgar as the main threat. I would imagine so. <laughs> He, this is the head honcho. Yep. So, because he's the head honcho, they decided to dispatch to them their own commander to meet him. Ooh. And that was a beautiful bug we know as the Swarm Lord. This is the first Ooh. time the Swarm Lord has been seen in the 40k uh, situation. And if you look oh, at the picture shit. of him... <laughs> <laughs> Those are ultramarines on the ground. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, let's go, Swarm Lord. So the moment this Swarm Lord arrived, mm -hmm. in a blink, in a heartbeat, the entire swarm completely changed. They went oh. from mindless berserk bugs to creatures of grand strategy. Ooh. They started to outmaneuver the ultramarines. They started to outflank them. They started to, to hide, and, and they, they started, their accuracy got better. They, their dodging got better. Oh, they, shit. They started to match the Ultramarines tit for tat in terms of intelligence. As the Swarm oh. Lord would move up with an entire bodyguard of things called Tyrant Guard at his disposal, a, like every time he would growl or send a, a synapse link, 10,000 alien minds in his mind would answer. He oh. would send out a signal and then Molochs and Trigons would blow through the tunnels that they were using to maneuver through. And so Damn. then the Ultramarines would have to deal with these Molochs. And then by the time that they were killed, the entire tunnels they would maneuver through were filled with gore and smaller bugs. Oh. Okay. And so they would have to burn it out with flamers. But because of this, they left their major Imperial Bane Blade exposed in which the Swarm Lord personally led its contingent to destroy, which completely lost them the left flank of the Starfield. Or Starport. Oh, shit. So Swarm Lord is a game chain. Like... 
Oof. He, he is matching Kalgar. Every time Kalgar would make a plan, the Swarm Lord would counter it instantly. Um, the Swarm Lord is like Imitech the Storm Lord thinker. God. So he's so a he tactician. Is, he is legitimately better than Kalgar and the Ultramarines at this point. Like, if if I'm I'm assuming at some point he's gonna one v one Kalgar. I mean, there's no 40k. There's no one v one. Right, and and it sounds like he should, by all accounts, it sounds like he should body the shit out of Kalgar. So the idea is that the Swarm Lord and remember in uh, remember in Mass Effect, the Mass Effect thing for us, uh, the Geth, Geth. Yes intelligence is varied by amount of geth uh software or or uh whatever it is systems yeah, yeah. in a body what made legion so special is he was actually a thousand geth in one body yeah yeah right the swarm i always assume the tyrannids is a similar thing termagants and hormagants are a singular mind or maybe like 10 minds like ripper swarms are one but then like the swarm lord is the will of ten thousand. The Swarm Lord is the will of the hive mind made manifest. Oh, okay. So Damn. they're losing their flank. Their tunnels are filled with creatures they can't deal with anymore. They're being they're being surrounded and swarmed almost. They're getting like pushed back and back and back. Mm -hmm. Eventually, what the Swarm Lord bellowed a challenge at Kalgar himself. <laughs> he let out this screech. And it started advancing personally with him and his entire tyrant guard. And in response, Kalgar said, "You you want you, you're going for a fistin boy?" And started going <laughs> at him as well. And I what, gotta be what honest. The, what do the tyrant guard look like? Cause they sound super special. Uh, tyrant there... guard are a bodyguard variant of. Okay, unfortunately, the minis look like shit. Um. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Dude, this thing looks so dope. Ooh. Oh, that is so dope. Yeah, they're like, they're oh, like little shit. creepy cara carapace bodyguards. Oh, damn. And he's rolling around with a bunch of... What a badass. He's got God, like six Swarm of Lord them. The is so cool. The Swarm Lord's so cool, man. He's so dope. Holy shit. Have we talked about him before? No, because it's not really like a... Like this is where you would learn the most about the Swarm Lord is this topic right here. So okay, okay. Um, so the challenge has been echoed, and they now, of course, now as much as you know, you may not like the Ocean Marines. Kalgar saying this tactician saying, yeah, it's a good idea to engage the Swarm Lord in hand-to-hand -hand combat with my <laughs> fists is kind of baller. That you know. I don't want to give Ultramarines props, but it is that's a that's a ballsy uh, Chad move to see the Swarm Lord in all of his whew, badassery with all those swords and be like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand to hand this motherfucker with my fist. Well, power gauntlets, but still, that's that is a ballsy move. I'll give him that. S sees a, a a gigantic bug the size of a freight train. I'm gonna punch it. Yeah, with <laughs> wielding four swords. Or uh, is it four or is it like six? Yeah, four swords. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, Damn. but of course, the Swarm Lord is a major tactician. And as they charged, a bunch of the Ultramarines that were serving as uh, his rear guard were stepping over piles of Tyranid bodies that the Swarm Lord had subdued and were actually still alive. And oh. so as they were making their way up, a bunch of Hormagants and bugs would burst from the body pile, pretending to be dead, and cut him off from his reinforcements. Oh, wow. What a move. What a move. <laughs> Jesus. They were just lying in, literally lying in wait. Literally oh, playing dead. Leg oh, my God. That's, boy, Swarm Lord is a, is a bad motherfucker. He Holy is. shit. So as the, this fight ensued, this became like this massive duel, of course. Tyrant Guard against the Kalgar's Honor Guard, which I believe is called the Vitrix Guard. Mm -hmm. um, Vitrix, Vitrix Honor Guard. That's the name of them. These guys actually look really awesome. Uh, their okay. their minis are a little are a little old Weak. and very yeah. and very Roman. Um, so, ooh, they're, still they're kind of cool. Dope. I love the helmet, like that, uh, the gold, I guess, is that an, 
Aquila that's on their helmet? Yeah, I oh. think so. That's actually really dope. Like, if I, I, I think they look had cool. to get Ultramarine minis, it'd be them. They're I dope. think they look they look pretty dope between the cape and the they have like a sometimes they have axes and stuff. It's really cool. Oh yeah. Uh, can't but I'm as this, an uh, I I told you they're they're this is well, the time where you would think they were okay. Um. So anyway, <laughs> as they do their giant duel, this is roughly around the time when the uh, obviously it should make sense that with all the pilots dead, they called for reinforcements. Of course. Um, so the Ultramarine Thunderhawks. Uh, at this point, just about showed up a couple of them, and in order to ferry in the remaining survivors back. Uh, during okay. this period of time, the Swarm Lord did not take much damage. Of course, of course. Uh, unfortunately, and the and Marnius Calgar lost, I believe, both arms and a leg. Oh, or, this is where he loses them. This is where he gets hobbled like shit, or it's or it's both legs and an arm. I forget exactly okay. how it goes. Yeah, but he loses he a bunch of limbs. Yeah, he loses a bunch of limbs, and then his main honor. They they had to drag him back into the Thunderhawk, and basically his entire honor guard, like all of them, sacrificed themselves to keep him alive. Oh wow, that's I, uh, that's that's hardcore. Let's yeah. go, Tyranids! He Let's basically, go! Basically lost his entire honor guard to the Swarm Lord and the Tyrants before they were able to barely evacuate Calgar. Ah, uh, Shai <laughs> has the picture. Let's go! What is that from? Did some, that's, is that's that just an artist speech. rendition? It's text oh, speech. Oh, okay. Got you. They, they that's joked hilarious. They got the um, Monty Python and the Black Knight kind of shit. We'll call it a draw. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that that image is classic. I love it. I love it. Um, so yeah. So wait, and this is on Macrog, right? This is the the home world of the old the home world. It doesn't sound like they're gonna win. <laughs> like it sounds like the Swarm Lord has sufficiently beat the shit out of the Ultramarines. Like, and and I I don't recall a part of the lore where Macrog falls and is eaten by Tyranids, so there must be something that drives the Tyranids away. But Calgar's fucked. So what happens is now this has become kind of a space battle, right? Oh, uh, because okay. he is head back into the ship and he's sending himself off. And besides the light amounts of light support he's using right now, even though he's missing three limbs, yeah. um, what's happening in space is practically even more grim than what's on the surface. The oh, first wave... No. <laughs> the first wave of this destroyed a major battle barge. The third oh. wave destroyed most of the merchant fleet. The ninth wave has completely overrun the orbital defense platforms. Mm. And the twelfth <laughs> wave no has destroyed them. Oh. So, <laughs> how... Let, let, I'll tell you, my friend. Okay. So, so um, also, oh, a, a thing to back this up real quick, because I, I should mention this. Uh, on Tyran, the first time they arrived, the Astropaths uh -huh. actually did call for help, but the shadow and the warp from the Tyranids stopped it from happening. Oh, that's right. I forgot that the Tyranids had a shadow in the warp, and they could just fuck around with the uh, Astropaths and telepathic messages. That's right. You told me about yeah, that in yeah, the yeah. Tyranid episode, I assume. I forgot to mention yeah. that, um, but obviously because Kripman found this and then went back to warn them, that's mm -hmm. why they were able to know. Uh, but, so, at this point, the Swarm Lord decided to bait Kalgar into a plan. He, okay. he dropped all of his major hive ships in kind of upper atmosphere, unloaded the entire amount of Tyranid, I guess units, whatever, into oh. onto the planet, and then took all of his ships away and what he decided to do was take them, the Swarm Lord decided to take them to a ringed planet called, uh, oh, Circe. Of course it was Circe. Um, oh, okay. Or Circe. And as it sent them away, it was the idea to bait Kalgar's fleet into dealing with him. And right. Kalgar took said bait, but he oh. had his own little plan. Uh, as he sent his fleet towards to deal with the uh, Tyranid main battle force, the main hive fleet over in this ringed world. This is when his reinforcements arrived, the battle fleet Tempestus. 
uh, the entire battle fleet Tempestus, like the, the whole fleet finally arrived from the planets of da na 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 Baca. <laughs> Those sussy Bacas. Literally B A K K A. <laughs> those those Bacas. The entire battle fleet Tempestus from Baca arrived, and the point was actually a pincer move. So they arrived from the warp immediately with the Ultramarines on their backside to gun them down from both sides. Oh. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that wasn't even enough. Oh. <laughs> as the hive mind was too big and there were too many of them. Wow. So what they did in STEM was they took a ship, something known as an Emperor class battleship. Now, that's got to be huge. It's I think it's the largest. Oh boy. Uh, it is very slow and it is the largest capital ship. I is I think the oldest design at, of okay. all time, and I don't think they can make more of them because they don't have the <laughs> STC. Oh, okay. Remember how we so meme what, on... So they've only got like five of them or something and they they just can't make any more? Uh, le, le, or more than that, but, you know, they, yeah. there's n not as many. Remember how we meme on Abaddon for basically throwing the chessboard away by yeeting the, um, the Blackstone Fortress into Cadia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is that on a smaller scale. Oh, um, do they just do they just sacrifice an emperor class uh warship? Is that they, what they're doing? They decided to full speed ahead orc style big red button gun this bastard dead <laughs> into the center of the Tyranid hive fleet and immediately detonate its warp engines. Oh. And so what it did was that because the hive fleet was so densely packed it sucked a good, like, 90% of the Tyranid Hive Fleet into the warp. Oh, wow. Along That's... with the Emperor-class battleship, which I'm sure there's some Chaos Boys in there who are having a blast right now. <laughs> a ball, an absolute ball. But damn, they sacrificed an Emperor... Emperor-class class battleship. Battleship for that. I mean, I guess at that point... You can't lose uh, Macraw, and you can't lose any more Ultramarines, because that's like, that's like the main Imperium stuff. Um, I guess it'd be worth the sacrifice. You see that picture save... of ships? Oh, uh, so you see the picture of ships uh, that Chai boasted him? Yeah. The one in the middle, the blue one, I believe yeah. that's the Covenant of Blood. Holy shit. And the Emperor <laughs> class is the one on top. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> My god. <laughs> That's... Who, where do you even find the materials to build something that... Good lord. It's, it's 40k, man. Fuck it. It is 40k. They build, they build flying citadels. Like, they build knights. That, yeah, it's true. And it's not like they can readily build these anymore. They don't even have the STC for it, so... Or they, they might have the STC, but it's just... The, the sheer amount of resources is so difficult. Mm. It's, it's yeah. a whole thing. Um, so, so, this, this, so this is what turns the tide in favor of the Ultramarines is like they blew this thing up. It sucked up a bunch of the uh, the fleet, the hive fleet, and they were able to fend them off. Yeah, because at that point they were able to finally gun down the rest of the fleet because there wasn't much yeah. left. Uh, now, is this a sacrifice? Oh, my God. Yeah. Like it is a sacrifice and a half yeah. to well, get actually, rid of an gonna, Emperor class. I was going to ask when the Emperor class ship exploded it probably took a shitload of Ultramarines with it too, right? Because that's a big boom. Like, they might have done it in the center of the Hive Fleet, but they must have gotten a truckload of Ultramarines in there too, right? Uh, Probably not, because I'm pretty sure they, they charged it into the Hive Fleet and they knew what they were doing, so they either backed up or whatever. Oh, okay. um, Now, granted, we don't need to discuss the most likely hundreds of thousands of souls aboard that ship. <laughs> that are now because detonating a warp drive is is the concept of like I always assumed it like a vortex where everything then gets sucked in through like a drainage hole through the warp from real space. Yeah, it gets like like through like oh. a straw. Yeah, well, a part of me was thinking that they might have remote been able to like fly it in and detonate it, but they had like a full crew on that thing. I'm, I'm assuming they evacuate as much as they could. 
Yeah, uh, but just there's the, always the bare required minimum crew. to actually. Yeah, there's yeah. always a certain level of required crew. So, yep, yep. Damn, that is um, a sacrifice and a half. It is, and so at that point, though, the the tide on the space battle really began to change. Um, yeah. And so at that point, they took their ships down to Macrog in order to attempt to save whoever was left and deal with the rest of the Nids. Um, the question was really, would Macrog survive? Would the, the fortresses survive? Yeah. Um, now, they checked out the, I believe, the southern fortress? Uh, no, the, the northern fortress to the first company. And as they weighed their way in, they saw Tyranid bodies stacked up to six height. And dead in the center, they found the last remaining of First Company, which was four or five Terminators, literally all back to back, surrounded Whoa. entirely by Tyranid's bodies. But all, <laughs> but all of them were were dead, including the Terminators. Ooh wee! That's so. Uh, the First that's... Company was completely wiped out. There was Jeez. not a single living soul in the Northern Fortress, and a couple survived the southern fortress whoa <laughs> that's that's hardcore um so if if that emperor class battleship wasn't if they couldn't get it or they couldn't explode it it's it's over for like it's over for macron it's probably over for all of ultramar right ultramar is overall extremely fucked until they can find another major last stand um, I know that the the Blood Angels took a took a part at some point as well, but I'm mainly sticking with this one. Uh, Damn, I mean this, it's, this they're, is... they're still kind of fucked, honestly. Like they've lost so many and so much from this uh, this hive fleet that, like, God, like, <laughs> have they even fully recovered? Like in present, what? How long ago was this battle? Um, I'm not sure. I uh I I need to double check the time frame. Let's look let's look up here. It is M745 M41. So it's about 250 years back before the current time frame. Oh, so they probably still haven't recovered from this onslaught. I I'm I'm assuming that they I mean Ultramar gets a lot of recruits because it's mm. an Ultramar or the Ultramarines get a lot of recruits because it's an Ultramar. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I'd say that they're having a they they probably recovered mostly, but it took them a long time. Remember when the Imperial Fists got fucked up by Percherabo in his iron cage? <laughs> yeah. I this do. is their I do. This, this is their iron cage. Yeah. Man. So that's, it's a cage that's, made that's of brutal. flesh. <laughs> so uh what what happened with the, the Swarm Lord and uh, Kalgar? So Kalgar obviously survived. Um, uh -huh. they, he got his bionic replacements. Kalgar is actually the first ever space marine to attempt to swap over from being normal to a Primaris marine. Oh, um, okay. He was, the surgery was actually done by Belisarius Call himself, and Whoa. it only had a 60% chance of success, and he said, fuck it, do it anyway. Damn. Okay. Yeah. But wait, didn't uh, Kalgar chase the Swarm Lord for like to that ring planet to try and deal with them? No, the Swarm Lord is is a bug on the on the ground. Don't forget like this is the hive mind. It, if it oh, wants to like the Swarm Lord okay. I think is dead. They, they don't really know. The Swarm Lords they think they found the Swarm Lord and its bodies and stuff on the planet. It died at some point. But it's it's not dead dead. It's never dead. Right. Okay. So it, it'll they'll just find like a new host to put like all of those um, mines, into. mines into. So oh okay. yeah, it's they, yeah. They, I was they, saying they it was rebuild. like Harbinger from Mass Effect, where it's like you kill him, but then he's just gonna assume direct control of like something else. And exactly. Become another swarm lord. Right. There, there's there are technically infinite i don't know if they can make multiple swarm lords at a time they probably can but in a sense there is infinite swarm lords you can keep making more swarm lords gotcha god that's 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 frightening that's Man. to have multiple swarm lords that are just like fucking everything that's that's very very frightening thunderbolts and lightning dude i mean like like just should i post this already but just look look like look at this picture this 
is is what was happening on the on the um outskirts of macrog this is the battle of macrog this is oh this is canon <laughs> canon artwork of the battle of macrog they kind of look like reapers too going back to mass effect they actually they kind of look like reapers the big ones a, li a little bit yeah a little bit yeah that's 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 such an insane battle like you i cannot fully wrap my head around the scope of just how many tyranids there were like every new picture is like holy shit there were a lot of bugs and it's like you can't really comprehend just how many of these little fuckers are there like it's that's they're like blotting out the sky and this is one hive fleet a singular this is hive fleet behemoth we haven't even talked about chronos kraken leviathan jormungandr so have the tyranids ever like done a multi hive fleet assault or has it always been like they're all kind of like so separated that they can't form up i don't know the answer to that one i always thought that the tyranid hive minds don't like each other i thought so that the, each each hive mind is like its own entity and therefore mm -hmm. kind of has a uh like yeah it's kind of like a competition they all want the most biomass kind of like an orc clan yeah but you'd think if they all just grouped up, wouldn't that but, be better? Because then you could just take all the stuff and you could just, everybody could, you'd, you'd literally take over the galaxy. Like if all of the hive fleets combined into one giant like biomass hive fleet of doom, you, you couldn't stop them. But I guess that's kind of the point in 40k, right? Is there so many like enemy factions that like if they stopped being so petty and hating each other they would just overrun the galaxy and kill everything. And that's what I, I assume this is kind of like their weakness is like they never they're too busy competing with each other to like form up and actually like overrun the galaxy. One would argue that if they all work together, there would be no food left to share. And then they would just kill each other as well. Yeah, I suppose I, that's true. Also, yeah. a reminder, each hive fleet has been found to arrive from a different point of the galaxy which means that we might be surrounded entirely oh Hi high fleet leviathan no. came from the bottom left hydra in the center behemoth gorgon kraken from the left uh the right hand side jormungandr and moloch from the top right oh no yay oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> Do you think that's where the story could potentially go, where we're going to be surrounded by Tyranids? The the thought the the thing is, is that these are all theories. Uh -huh. The Tyranids kind of operate on that fear of the unknown just slightly, mm -hmm. but the idea is really that we don't know if we're surrounded by the Tyranids, but because they enter, so the thing is, is that Tyranids don't have warp drives. They do, do not they... have faster than light travel. How do they travel then? By just, they just going. They just kind of sail around in space? Shy reminds me that they use like a gravity sling in order to have them go from destination to destination, which means huh. that they don't go faster than light, but they go very fast, but it will take like years and years and years to get there. But once they get there, once they trouble. get there, we've um, got a problem. Well, what's what's the biggest high fleet? Or are they it all behe It's Behemoth, okay. right? Or is it is it Behemoth or is it Leviathan? I think it's Behemoth. Okay. Largest hive fleet. I was going to say, is, the, is there even a biggest or are they all like relatively the same size? Oh, actually, it might be Leviathan. Okay. Uh, I think I think it's, I think it's, it's Leviathan. It might be Behemoth, but I think it's, oh, it's Leviathan. It's Leviathan. Yeah. Okay. And I'm assuming humans name these things because Tyranids don't name themselves. Correct. Here's high fleet Leviathan. Oh, cool. That's our galaxy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I wonder so how they many got bugs. these names. And I wonder who named them. And why they uh, named them know. that. You want to see a... Uh, you want to see a Carnifex killing a, a rhino? Carnifex, man, we are just going full-on Mass Effect today, aren't we? And Carnifex is the name of, uh, of a bug, of one of the bugs. Oh, boy. It looks, it looks like a swarm like warbler with us. What? It looks like a it looks like a Krogan a little bit without the armor. 
No. Well, and fangs. Well, the face looks like a Krogan. They just have a carapace. Shut up. Whatever. We're, we're and, in Mass Effect mode. There's going to be a new Mass Effect game eventually. Anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really tempering my expectations. Yeah. Andromeda's I've been, fun, though. I've been burned before. So is there, a, is there a Swarm Lord mini on the tabletop, and does it fuck? Uh, the Swarm Lord mini on the tabletop does exist, and it does fuck. Um, <laughs> it doesn't fuck as much as it could. Um, well, right, because far... you can't make it too overpowered. Well, unfor uh, unfortunately, well, so there's the mini. Um, oh, the, it's... The, the pictures look a lot cooler. It's still nice. It's still cool, but... The, the 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 pictures you showed made it look way cool. It looks a little too chunky, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think the the hive tyrant slash swarm lord kit is a little bit older compared to some. Uh, um, okay. I oh think... god, it can grow wings. That's a hive tyrant. That's a different unit. Oh, okay, gotcha. But I was gonna say that's very different. <laughs> yeah, it's not as fun for me as like a toxicrine, which I find to be quite enjoyable. That's oh a little, god, those are those boys. are so gross. <laughs> That's, but uh, that's... but the, the swarm lord actually is it's one of, for me the swarm lord is one of those things where it actually doesn't do as much damage as it should probably be doing, mm -hmm. um, but it has an ability that makes it like invaluable. It's uh, got to it, have like an really aura good. that like supercharges uh, allies within X meters, right? It's actually it has an ability where after a unit has moved, you can pick a unit and just let it move again. Oh. Which, is actually, <laughs> in my opinion, and in Tyranids are, besides a certain build, are not very good on tabletop right now. Uh, mm -hmm. But I tend to feel like that a lot of old codexes have these occasional rules that are just insanely bullshit, but are acceptable because it's an old codex. Mm -hmm. That's one of them. I think the Tyranids double move is fucking bullshit. <laughs> and it's really dumb. <laughs> but... It, you know, it's the codex sucks, so it's whatever. Yeah. Are um points wise, are Tyranids expensive? To buy or field? Uh to, to field them, like, cause I I imagine the whole point of Tyranids, much like in the lore with uh what we just talked about, like the idea is you wanna have a fuck bucket of them. Um so I would imagine like one Tyranid bug is like, oh yeah, that's like one point, so you can have like fucking two thousand of these little motherfuckers running around or something. Uh yeah, the there's you would swarm with Tyranids, yeah. I mean the swarm yeah. lord's expensive because he's an expensive model, but yeah, sure. little like each little gaunt is I think the same cost as a guardsman. So oh, okay. you're roughly this a similar model count as guard, but may, maybe more. Cool. Cool. Damn, also Tyranids, uh, Tyranids are dope like after hearing about the swarm lot i'm kind of like yo tyranids dough i i, I mean, know Cal everyone... calgar made a cool stand but damn tyranids dough they had to explode an emperor class battleship to deal with them once you hear about the tyranids feats it makes you want to get tyranids and then you look at the models does. and stuff and like and like the armies look so i mean the models are a little old sometimes and they look so dope and then you got this guy who's the turvagon oh. And he, wow. he it's a little like a birthing thing where it bursts a bunch of tiny little turvagons with guns. Ew, it is birthing them! Gross! But then you've got the model <laughs> that has a mini, and it's, look, they come! Hello, oh, it's me! Oh, no! <laughs> we're, we're being birthed! Ew! Those are awesome! <laughs> Ew, those oh. are awesome. Yeah, yeah. The it's it's the big Tyranid models that I'm like, yo, let's go. The little ones are fine. The little normie ones are fine, but those big ones are like, damn. No wonder people roll what is it? Uh Monster Mash? Monster Bash? Monster Mash just Nids. Big Tyranids. They're so cool. I man, the Tyranids and the Tyrannic War, it's how you one of the reasons people get into Nids, I I'm curious if this video has, makes us start any Nids fans, just like we've got White Scars fans from the White Scars episodes and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I mean, you've made a Tyranid fan out of me just because they fucked some Ultramarine shit up. Uh, yeah, also, but you gotta Swarm appreciate looks dope some, as hell. Yeah. You gotta appreciate some Ultramarines a little more now, though. They put up a fight. Yeah. Yeah, they were willing to sacrifice a lot. They didn't just, hey, look, we're so strong. We beat the Nids. Boop, 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 boop. They, 
they they last standed uh a lot of them last standed on uh macrog so i mean i i give props to the ultramarines this time this time if you want to hear about Tyranids fucking shit up wait till devastation of ball episode Yes, Devastation of Ball. That is going to, but that'll be more exciting for you because that's Tyrannus versus the Blood Angels. Ooh, okay. Uh oh, that clock. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Mm. That's that. That's that's the cliffhanger of the episode. When's the Devastation of Ball episode? Oh boy, that's a, that's that's a good one. We don't do a ton of like battles too often because it requires a lot of research. But it's uh, it's it's a good time. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Well, in that case, I don't think I got anything else. Any questions, DK? Mm, no, I think I asked all the questions that I had about tabletop and nids. Um, yeah, that's that's good. Uh, new new respect and love for the nids. A modicum of respect, I guess, for the Ultramarines. I, I think overall... I, we yeah. did it! We did Ebra it! Gr Ebra grudgingly is okay with the Ultramarines. I know I still hate them, but I'll give Ebra them props grudgingly okay. Eh, fine. This episode, I'm okay with the Ultramarines. They did good. Yay, all right. We did it. All right, everyone. Uh, you now have to... We win. Oh, my God. Someone drew the Swarm Lord as a waifu. Oh, nice! All right, the episode is ending yes! now. Sh Shy has no right to judge us. Goodbye, mm. everybody. Thank That's you for good watching. Shit. Eat your biomass. I'm reporting this to the fucking <laughs> authorities. <laughs> I'm marrying it.